Good afternoon, everyone. Hope y'all are having a great day so far. So today, we are going to be taking a look at the third Japanese console in our Japanese console lot. This particular unit looks to be an SCPH 5500 unit. Looking through the vents over here, we could see that there is most likely not as much rust as the previous iteration of console which was the 7500 unit that we looked at in that other video. On the back of the unit, we can see that on the left we have the parallel input-output port, once again in typical used console fashion, missing the port cover. To the right of that we have the serial port for interconnectivity between two PlayStation 1 consoles. To the right of that, we have our AV multi-out jack, and of course, moving on further to the right edge of the console, we have our mains jack as well. So, judging by the serial number, I would expect for the optical drive to be more reliable than our SCPH 1000 units, since this particular revision would have been released between the SCPH 1000 and the SCPH 7500 series. So hopefully this is a step in the right direction. We can also see that the orientation of the optical drive is facing in sort of a rightwards direction, which is similar to the 7500 unit that we saw in a previous video. Overall, the console does not seem to have any issues with the open button. However, we will determine whether or not there are any issues with the memory card ports and the controller ports, as well as the outputted image, and of course, the optical drive testing our Japanese game over here. And, yeah, the condition of the unit is not as dirty as the previous unit as well. There's very little yellowing on this console, as far as I can tell. It just seems to be just, I guess, a little bit cleaner than what we have seen before, except for obviously some scratch marks here, here, there. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and test this particular unit. I'm going to be connecting to the AV out, multi out, there we go. Let's go ahead and connect to mains. Just like that. And let's go ahead and turn on our monitor. See if we have an outputted image. Once again, we are connected to our retro tank here through composite output through the multi out port. So it looks like we do have an image that is being produced on the screen. Let's go ahead and plug in, I almost forgot about this, <laughs> plug in the controller into the controller ports, keep our memory cards close to us, turn on the power and see what kind of image is produced. Okay, so it looks like the console is turning on. Let's take a closer look through interacting with the menu. Hmm. So that's interesting. So we've seen in the 7500 series that when you make a selection on the menu and you indicate that you want to select that choice with the X button, on the 7500 series, this whichever choice that you make would fade from white to black, possibly indicating that this is what you selected, and then it will go to the associated menu. However, this revision is most similar to what we have seen for the SCPH 1000 that we have looked at a little bit earlier. When you make a selection, it just goes directly to the menu. So 
And that being the case, I'm going to go ahead and insert a memory card into a memory card port one initially. And then from there, okay, there we go. We can go ahead and select memory card port one. And we can see that the data on memory card one is loading into the card one slot correctly as well. Let's go ahead and exit out of that menu. Just go ahead and hot swap the memory card into memory card slot two. That menu seems to take a few fractions of a second longer to load. However, in any case, we can see the data for memory card slot two is loading appropriately as well. So I do not see any particular issues with those ports, at least based upon our initial analysis. Let's go ahead and remove that memory card. And test the functionality of the optical drive with this Japanese Crash Bandicoot game. I'm going to go ahead and insert it. Close the disk drive and take a look at what is produced here. Okay, so it looks like the game is loading. It does sound like that drive and that slide mechanism and moving along the rails of that optical drive is really making a lot of noise. So. I think maybe that optical laser might be on its way out. Let's just wait a few more seconds here to see if the console does anything else. So I seem might be hard to pick up on camera, but I seem to be hearing this sort of slapping sound. It's almost as if, huh, just as I was saying that, now it's starting to, now it's doing the same thing. So it sounds like the little sled is going to the back of the line and then just sort of slapping either on one side or the other, and then just like bam, bam, or maybe, it could also be the lens itself moving upwards and downwards trying to focus, which means that the laser is obviously dying. So and now the disk drive has made no other noise. The disk was recognized, however, and now the console seems to be frozen on the screen. Let's go ahead and press the reset button and see what behavior is exhibited by this console. I doubt this is going to actually read the disk, however, we can go ahead and see. So similar to what we've seen before. Hmm. just more of the same. Let's go ahead and press the power button to turn the console off. And actually something that I would like to do is on the console itself, the manner in which the console detects that the disk tray, tray that disk 
tray is closed is that there's this little plastic post over here which plugs into this hole and this hole presses a button that lets the console realize that the disk drive is closed and then the game spins up. So what I'm going to do is press something through that hole so that I could just be pressed down and I could see what this disk is doing. So I can get a better idea of what those sounds are being caused by. So let's see. What kind of bits do I have here? Could maybe use this one actually. Let's see. Trying to see if that's the absolute. Yeah, the button does not really go down very far. It's different than the uh, the SCPH one thousand unit, which was literally just a hole. And the SCP H7500 unit, which had a button, but it was also like a hole very deep down as well. So let's go ahead and press the power button and see what the console does here. Okay, so it seems to be continuing to spin. My apologies for the shaky camera. It's sort of... Um, difficult to do this without three hands. Yeah. So, well, right now, I'm actually looking at the disc from the side, a little bit below the actual spinning of the disc. And I could see that what the laser is doing is that it's trying to focus and then it stops, focus, stops, focus, stops. And that's what that clicking noise is. It's basically just that crystal, crystal oscillator moving up and down and up and down. So this laser is most likely on its way out, unfortunately. It's just unable to produce enough power to read the data on the game. And as we know from the other video with the 7500 unit, this is a working game. So the issue is unfortunately with the optical drive itself, which is not entirely unexpected given the age of this console. Apologies for my neighbors setting off their car alarms and doing nothing about rectifying the situation. Seems to be a common occurrence in this neighborhood. But you know, not everyone can be a scholar. And neither am I. So, it seems like almost everything is working on this particular console. In the next video of this series, we can go ahead and take a closer look at the optical drive and troubleshoot it and maybe toggle the gain and the bias. There are two potentiometers that are on the board that are near that uh, CD ribbon cable that we can go ahead and take a closer look at. Yeah, well, that car alarm could not have come at a worse time, but in any case, that is more or less the end of the video, and we will be taking a closer look at this in the next iteration, taking a look at the optical drive and seeing if those potentiometers can be adjusted to strengthen or uh, make this crystal oscillator any more or less functional. So thank you all for watching, and I appreciate it. Hope you all have a great day. Take care.